We are grateful for all the support we have from our mindfulness coaches and artists who have partnered with Rihanna and me to bring our vision to reality. Thank you, Paul, Monica, and Vikas. I'm also really excited about drawing Paul's home virtually today so that we can see where he gets his inspiration from and what his sanctuary looks like. Thank you, Ayush, Rihanna, and hi, Paul. Um, it's the last day of our uh, beautiful six weeks journey, and I really thank Paul, Ayush, Rihanna, Aditi, and Monica for all the things collaboratively you have done. Amazing learning, wonderful journey, and thank you all for making me a part of this. Um, I um, was uh, listening and I was attending all the sessions of the past, and I really liked the idea which Paul last time mentioned about balancing feminine and masculine energy in us. So my meditation today, as at the last session, I'm working, I'm with you to train you or to make you understand how can we quickly balance our energy so that we can put all our focus and energy into the last session of the mandala today. So we can make it our uh, life asset further. So are we ready? Can we start now? So I'll start with the Guru Mantra. Thank you all. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwaraya, Guru Sakshad, Parabrahma, Tasmai, Shri, Guru Vedama. Thank you. Okay, I want to uh, start with an activity today. I want all of you, please hold your hands in this position, your fingertips touching each other's. And now I want you to close your eyes and allow yourself to feel the energy flowing on your fingertips. As you put your all focus on your fingertips, you feel these are the Areas of exchange of energies flow through our senses, our body, which works through our fingers, hands. Focus on your breathing now. And I want you to observe which nostril is breathing easier than the other one. If both are normal, great. If you find any one of the nostril is breathing easily, another one is a little heavier and blocked. I want you to start focusing on the energy to that part of the body. If the left nostril is heavy, blocked, shift your focus to the left body and feel if there's any heaviness there. Focus on that side of body. And try to shift the weight to the other side, through the fingertips. So the left side of the body is heavier than the right. Try to mentally shift the weight on the other side. And if the right side is heavy, try to shift the weight to the left side. And find the equal balance. And with every breath you take now, Feel your thoughts and emotions shifting through your fingertips from one side of your body to another side of body. Each breath is bringing you right balance. Ask yourself now, how can I be more balanced? Take note on each time you ask, this question and what thoughts comes into your mind. Observe these thoughts without judgment and then allow them to drift away. Relax your mind and body by noticing your breath coming in and flowing out. And now balancing equally in both the nostrils, both the bodies both the hands. Now find the right balance between your heart and mind. Emotions and logic. 
doing and allowing things to happen. This will help your subconscious mind to awaken this feeling whenever you feel a little unbalanced. And now, ask yourself to trace an emotion which is distracting you from this balance. Catch the first thought. It can come as an image, a voice, a vision, or a feeling. Allow yourself to become an observer and watch how just a thought can create an imbalance in you. Now, make a choice to let go and release that thought. Release that thought to the universe by giving yourself a reason to be thankful for something amazing exists in your life today. Say a word of gratitude to the universe for this moment, for this learning, for this body, for good health, and an ability to learn and trust the process. As you recite gratitude in your mind, Watch yourself coming to the right balance again. Feel your breathing getting softer, easier, and balanced. Watch yourself coming to the balance. Feel your breathing. How it is now, breathing flowing equally through both your nostrils. With the right balance, connect to your heart center and allow things to unveil to you. Discover what your heart is showing you right now. Dive into the beauty of magical colors and visions given to you. Find yourself opening and connecting to the unlimited capacity of the universe, becoming one with your heart chakra. Allow your mind to soak in the receiving with the pause with the space. Become receptive with an open heart and open arms. Try to receive what the universe is trying to give you right now. With all the receivers, start coming back into your mind, in body. Here and now, with all the beautiful experiences keep flashing with you whenever you try to connect, open to receive. Notice your breath becoming easier and lighter. Your body feeling lighter and lighter. Feel your breath becoming normal again. Feel that entire vibration in your hands, arms, shoulders and arms. And taking this beauty back with you, start breathing deeply. Straight down to your solar plexus and breathe out. Now breathe into your stomach. Be aware of your gut and breathe out. Take the next breath from the base of your spine and breathe out. And just allow this mantra to go deep inside each and every bee, particle of your being. Oh, Namah.
Shiva. Oh. Namo. Shiva. Oh. Namo. Shiva. With absolute vibration in your body, whenever you feel comfortable, you can open your eyes. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Some very beautiful manifestations of energies. So if it looks a little different on the screen now, it is because it is different. It's hard to imagine this is number six. Uh, it's all been, in some ways, what the mandala is, is it weaves everything together. So if I feel right now, I can feel all six sessions coming together as one. Uh, that's something beautiful about the mandalas. It ties everything uh, together. So one of the things, Lorna, one of the things we're gonna do is before we really start working, we're gonna take a little tour of my studio and see if this works. We're gonna be on a phone, which is different. We're usually on the computer. And when we come back to doing the artwork, we are gonna be on the computer. So a DT or Rihanna, if everything is looking good, please uh, let us know. And if it's not, let us know also, because if it doesn't work, then we'll just come right back and we'll start the drawing, which is the most important thing. But I thought it would be fun to take a few minutes and see my sanctuary, which it, it, you know, it's supposedly a house I live in, but it's not really, you know, you, you have to go by Buddha's mother and you have to go by two Ganesh guarding the doors and all my green heart centered plants, a beautiful red front door. And then you come into my sanctuary. So let's take a little tour and let's hope this thing works. Uh, Lorna will be holding the camera. So if, if everything's fine, no problem. If it's not, let us know and we'll adjust. We'll go back The computer sitting right here to my left so we can do that. All right, shall we go? Now you see this, this is a, somebody last week from India asked about um, the Sri Yantra. Well, it just so happens to be that right now I'm making a very, very large one for a woman in Sedona that wants to also have a sanctuary. And this is gonna be one of her main pieces. And this is uh, 60 inches by 60 inches or five feet by five feet. And it's very beautiful. It's not done, but we're working on it. So let's come here behind me. We just put up a few mandalas. Here's a beautiful Lakshmi that I did during COVID. And it's something completely different than probably you've all seen is because she's giving out fruits and vegetables instead of money. So uh, I thought it was the right thing to can, right thing to do. So it's very beautiful. It has one of my mandalas in it and a beautiful Ganesh down here that I call Sweet Ganesh. Let's, let's move over here to Kali. Here's a little couple of Kali's that I'm doing in the workshops. <laughs> I do um, samples and these are just little samples I've done and I'm doing four of these. They're called, they're gonna be called the colors of Kali. The next one is gonna be black. And then the one after that's gonna be orange. And then I'm gonna do a painting with all four of them together as one, the colors of Kali. So this is my studio. We can fit eight people in here painting. And every a couple times a month, we have workshops here and people come They've come from as far away as Japan and Turkey. And so we go in here, this is the entrance. This is the entrance to my sanctuary. So on the left side, Lorna, come closer. Somebody gave me an old Ganesh and I put 3000 crystals on it and made it brand new and painted it to look like new. On the other side here, I have Kuan Yin with 24 weapons, she's a protector. She's, this is at least a hundred years old and it comes from China. Here's my very first painting, it's kind of dark, I don't know if you can see it, but that's the very first Saraswati I ever painted. 
And here, the goddess of artists from South India is a beautiful uh, Saraswati. She greets everybody at the front door. Here's a painting above here. I just did a commission of this, this guru for somebody in Connecticut. And here, here is my friends. And most of these come from people during COVID. Most of these are from COVID that people are for somehow letting go of their deities. And I'm there to bring them home. And a lot of these I've repaired. So let's go up the stairs now. Yeah. Here's a portrait of my mother that she did a long time ago, right between Kuan Yin and Buddha. So look back here, these are paintings. Some of these of, of people that have died, that there's several here, the people that have had them for 20, 30 years and died, but there's very different. There's Christian paintings, there's Buddha meditating, there's a temple, there's a very modern, this, this tree over here is 22 karat gold. It's real gold. And let's, let's start, we'll, we'll circumambulate. So here's one of my paintings that I did. I had it carved in wood when I was in Bali. And of course, Kuan Yin is the greeter. And then here we have several carvings that I brought back from Nepal. Here you can show them this one with a Sri Yantra inside of it. Oh, there's good light on that camera. Huh? Mm -hmm. And here, look, this is, this is a wonderful green tar given to me by one of my uh, wealthy clients. It's beautiful. It's got a solid 22 karat gold frame on it. As far as I'm concerned, it's priceless. Let's keep going. Here's a beautiful Buddha I have. And a carving I got from my, this was a gift for my aunt when she died. That's a carving from, from Thailand. Here's my roommate. <laughs> I sit and meditate with a life-size Shiva. He's black, he's beautiful. He's got his Dhammaru. He's got the fire going, he's dancing. So even though it looks like I live alone, I don't. This is my roommate, <laughs> Shiva. Paul, well, this is amazing. Um <laughs> We want to come and have dinner with your roommate too sometime. Yeah. <laughs> You're self-inviting well, ourselves. <laughs> I've never seen a bigger one. You can comment like that. I love it. Now look, <laughs> this, is, this is 25 years ago when I first started being a mandala painter. My spiritual teacher gave me this in a calendar. And I took it on the, the, the task of creating it. And it, the reason I did it because it was formidable. And it took me five months to do this. That was Paul, this is it only me or does this speak to you? The, I, I'm setting my eyes first time on this. I know you've given us a tour before, but well, this is a live vibrating piece that you have right there. Yes, this goes back to the about 900. So it's 1200 years old to a, a, a famous Buddhist teacher called Padma Sambhava. And it's the whole Buddhist iconography there's 722 deities in here, and it's all the different minds. I mean, it looks, if you're looking at it, it's flat, but it's not really flat. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And when I was doing this, I, I, was, I had a lot of fear because the fear was I could never complete it. But I wound up completing it. Now, you see this? This is a, somebody last week from India asked about... Um, the Sri Yantra. Well, it just so happens to be that right now I'm making a very, very large one for a woman in Sedona that wants to also have a sanctuary. And this is going to be one of her main pieces. And this is uh, 60 inches by 60 inches or five feet by five feet. 
and it's very beautiful. It's not done, but we're working on it. So let's come here behind me. We just put up a few mandalas. Here's some beautiful Lakshmi that I did during COVID. And it's something completely different than probably you've all seen is because she's giving out fruits and vegetables instead of money. So uh, I thought it was the right thing to get, right thing to do. So it's very beautiful. It has one of my mandalas in it and a beautiful Ganesh down here that I call sweet Ganesh. Let's, let's move over here to Kali. Here's a little couple of Kali's that I'm doing in the workshops. <laughs> I do um, samples and these are just little samples I've done. And I'm doing four of these. They're called, they're gonna be called the colors of Kali. The next one is gonna be black. And then the one after that's gonna be orange. And then I'm gonna do a painting with all four of them together as one, the colors of Kali. So this is my studio. We can fit eight people in here painting. And every a couple times a month, we have workshops here and people come They've come from as far away as Japan and Turkey. And so we go in here, this is the entrance. This is the entrance to my sanctuary. So on the left side, Lorna, come closer. Somebody gave me an old Ganesh and I put 3000 crystals on it and made it brand new and painted it to look like new. On the other side here, I have Kuan Yin with 24 weapons, she's a protector. She's, this is at least a hundred years old and it comes from China. Here's my very first painting, it's kind of dark, I don't know if you can see it, but that's the very first Saraswati I ever painted. And here, the goddess of artists from South India is a beautiful uh, Saraswati. She greets everybody at the front door. Here's a painting above here, I just did a commission of this, this guru for somebody in Connecticut. And here, here is my friends. And most of these come from people during COVID. Most of these are from COVID that people are for somehow letting go of their deities. And I'm there to bring them home. And a lot of these I've repaired. So let's go up the stairs now. Um, yeah. Here's a portrait of my mother that she did a long time ago, right between Kuan Yin and Buddha. So look back here, these are paintings. Some of these of, of people that have died, that there's several here, the people that have had them for 20, 30 years and died, but there's very different. There's Christian paintings, there's Buddha meditating, there's a temple, there's a very modern, this, this tree over here is 22 karat gold. It's real gold. And let's, let's start, we'll, we'll circumambulate. So here's one of my paintings that I did. I had it carved in wood when I was in Bali. And of course, Kuan Yin is the greeter. And then here we have several carvings that I brought back from Nepal. Here you can show them this one with a Sri Yantra inside of it. Oh, there's good light on that camera. Huh? Mm -hmm. And here, look, this is, this is a wonderful green tar given to me by one of my uh, wealthy clients. It's beautiful. It's got a solid 22 karat gold frame on it. As far as I'm concerned, it's priceless. Here's an elephant. I bought it at an auction and I, it was old. It was like 200 years old. And over a period of time, I cleaned it up, I painted it, I put all the crystals on it, made it beautiful. We're not sure who the Maharaja is, but it's still the Maharaja. This is my, this is my altar. And I have pictures of my grandparents, my parents, my spiritual teachers. 
little things I picked up in the world, like this, this little box I bought in India. This little box I bought, brought back from India, a little Sri Yantra somebody painted for me on a box. Let's keep going. Here's a beautiful Buddha I have. And a carving I got from my, this was a gift for my aunt when she died. That's a carving from, from Thailand. Here's my roommate. <laughs> I sit and meditate with a life-size Shiva. He's black, he's beautiful. He's got his Damaru. He's got the fire going, he's dancing. So even though it looks like I live alone, I don't. This is my roommate, <laughs> Shiva. Paul, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> we wanna come and have dinner with your roommate too sometime. Yeah. <laughs> You're self-inviting well, ourselves. I've never seen a bigger one. You can comment like that. I love it. Now look, this is this is 25 years ago when I first started being a mandala painter. My spiritual teacher gave me this in a calendar. And I took it on the 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 task of creating it. And it, the reason I did it because it was formidable. And it took me five months to do this. Paul, well, is it only me or does this speak to you? The, I, I'm setting my eyes first time on this. I know you've given us a tour before, but well, this is a live vibrating piece that you have right there. Yes, this goes back to the about 900. So it's 1200 years old to a, a, a famous Buddhist teacher called Padma Sambhava. And it's the whole Buddhist iconography. There's 722 deities in here. And it's all the different minds. I mean, it looks, if you're looking at this it, flat, but it's not really flat. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And when I was doing this, I, I was, I had a lot of fear because the fear was I could never complete it, but I wound up completing it. Here's another one that somebody gave me this broken Hanuman and I fixed it redid it, repainted it, and, and I put crystals all over it to make it alive. Okay. Next one. I, I, I'm gonna try not to take too long. Uh, so, so I was with my guru, one of these events that I was going to when I was very young, I was 31, 32, like I had said, very successful. And when I went out to this thing with two very famous people, for some reason, I just painted a mandala. It was a very small group and it was called reconnections. And so what happened to me is I reconnected with my true self and not my surface self. In that little circle of people was Barbara Streisand, and also Carrie Fisher, who is the uh, Princess Leia in Star Wars. And at the time, they were the two most famous women in, in the world. And what I could do to contribute to that amazing little group was I painted a mandala. And the moment it was finished, at the end of it, the spiritual teacher handed me a blank check and said, any amount, just write it in, I want this painting. Barbara Streisand came up and said, I want your next painting. Uh, there was a doctor there that wanted the next painting. And within three or four months, I had a long list of people that wanted mandalas. So it just started magically happening. And if you look at the, the mystery schools, most of the mystery schools don't start until somebody's about 35 on up to 40. And that's right in the area where I started painting mandalas and it's never stopped. I mean, as busy as I, I sold a painting of, um, Yo Parmahansa Yogananda today that somebody wants me to paint. And I sold a painting of Kali last week. And then the week before that, I sold a Saraswati. So it, 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 it's an amazing dream I'm living. And I've been teaching for 30 years and doesn't stop. It's almost every single weekend now I'm teaching a class. This weekend I'll be a teaching a class at a beautiful old home up in the hills. The lady's owned it for 42 years. Her husband is very, very famous. He's no longer alive, but the house is just spectacular. And 
you know, that led up to meeting you. And then you came up and saw another one of my beautiful houses up there in um, Santa Cruz. And what a nice place that was to, for you to visit and what a nice place it was for me to teach. So that's how I got into it. And I've never stopped. So let's let's get back to the painting. Paul, today is your session. And uh, you are leading us. And we are totally relying on you to take it however way you want to close this. Okay, but I do want to mention as a way of thanking you. Um, and you've spoken so much about Sri Yantra that I have sourced a crystal quartz Sri Yantra for you. Uh, and uh, as, as many people will know, it's a master healer, the clear quartz, it's a master healer. And, uh, and we also have been doing giveaways. So I'm also sourcing one for Bunty D'Souza, who's our winner today. It will take three to four weeks because somebody in Nasik actually uh, creates these. And Nasik near Pune in India. So Paul, whenever I go to India next, it'll be a while before you get it. But Bunty, we will get it to you in three to four weeks. Well. So congratulations. And uh, yes, Vikas and Monica, you thank are you. getting it too. So thank you so much for everything. We really, really appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you very much. That, you know, touches my heart. And I can tell you this, I might get to India before you do because... <laughs> It'll I'm, locked. For I'm locked in. I've watched like 10 straight now Indian movies. I'm locked into another one with Amir Khan. It's so dang funny. I, I absolutely love every minute of it. So sure. So well, it's your you. session tonight, Paul, however you want to. Okay. So, well, yeah. I'd like to get back to almost completing this and then uh, leave it up for a little bit more. Some, some questions from people because questions are the most important thing. And who knows, maybe we'll work out where in a month from now or something like that, we'll have another session. Or maybe if that project we're talking about um, happens, we can maybe tape that and then replay it in one of your sessions here in a month or so, something like that. So it, this isn't the end end, it's just the end of this period. And maybe there'll be something in the future. It's certainly review or questions from students in the future People are emailing me or texting me all the time with questions constantly, which is great. So let's get to this. This is where we left off. Okay. It looks like it's almost done, but there's a few things that we want to talk about tonight that are different. Now, I know some of you did just the circle without the square around it. When you see Tibetan art, and the reason I come back to Tibetan art a lot is because their religion, and they don't call it a religion, they call it a philosophy. Their philosophy has more to do with mandalas than any other um, uh, religion or philosophy. We find it in strong in Buddhism, strong in Hinduism, strong all over the world. There's a lot of mandalas, especially in the Muslim world, the beautiful mandalas in their temple. Every temple is a mandala. You know, they don't call it a mandala, but that's what it is because it's a, it's a uh, symbol between them and God. That's, that's what they see it as. Um, I've been told that the mandalas that we're doing are eyes of the divine. In other words, when you're looking at this little painting, the painting is looking back at you. So I might just mention here that there, there's a lot of metaphysical attributes to mandalas and i'll just mention them some of you might not understand but i'm certainly if you're if you're going to work with mandalas you'll you your your language your depth of, of feeling and thinking and knowing will change and expand because the mandala is a is a is a portal into the greater part of you if we look at the infinite universe we're just a tiny little spot in the world that's spinning through space well there's a universe inside us and you're just a small little part of that universe is what we call your conscious mind. But the conscious mind is very, very small compared to this amazing body that we have uh, and this amazing life we've been given on this amazing planet that we have. And the question is, how does one grow, expand and go deeper inside themselves? There's many, many ways to do this. 
but one of them is the mandala. It's a way to go inside yourself and grow and expand. And the beautiful thing about it is you can do it just on your kitchen table. You can sketch out when you're on an airplane. You can do it anywhere because looking at a mandala, painting in a mandala, drawing a mandala is all the same thing. It's a meditation through your eyes, whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you want to or not, that's what's happening. That's why a, a constant mandala artwork or painting leads towards transformation of consciousness. It's just an automatic, that's just what it does. So if you're gonna do this, your life can change and change very rapidly. So uh, we looked at this circle. So what I wanna introduce tonight, we haven't done any straight lines, okay? And when you look at the Tibet mandalas, they all are in rectangles or squares. You never see a Tibetan mandala just in a circle because fundamentally that doesn't um, allow us to see what they are because their mandalas are their religion. Like Aditi, you were asking me about the painting upstairs. That painting was done over 1200 years ago. And the reason they did it because you go back 1200 years and so many people were illiterate then. There wasn't the school systems like we have today. Kids weren't educated. They were working. And so <clears throat> this famous teacher developed that mandala to teach people of their entire religion. And <clears throat> since then, nobody's done it better. I mean, that's the masterpiece. And when I did that, it proved to me that something inside me was far greater than I had imagined. And that painting revealed that there's a much, much bigger part that's coming out. So anybody that's been with us, what the painting, this little painting that we've drawn, the truth about it is, is that there's something inside that's trying to connect with you or speak to you. Outside, we're trying to be calm and we're trying to be meditative, which is good and fine. That's exactly what it is. But at the same time, underneath that is a much bigger part of yourself that speaks through the painting. So when we, when we, when we look back at the, our drawing or painting, it's the same thing. And I introduce four lines to the outside, what those four lines are there. Now, if, you've, if you're at home and you've just got a round one and you don't have space or a ruler, a little ruler to make the straight lines around it, that's okay. You can just pay attention and learn and then do it on your next one. So when I first did this, I drew four lines around here with a little ruler. And what those lines represent is our foundation. They're square. We started off with the meditation about balancing the masculine and the feminine. Well, the mandala itself, all done with curves, all done with colors, is a fundamental image of the feminine. So when we put the frame on the outside, we're balancing the male and the female. That's why it's very important. And that's why the Tibetans always do it. Even, <clears throat> excuse me, even if they do a round painting, they always put a square on it. Or if you see them doing their great sand paintings, which are big circles, but around the circle, they always create a square and it's always on a square table. The reason for that is it's all about balance. So if we do that, then fundamentally, we want to put these, we want to bring these together. We've got this square and the circle, and, and we want to bring it together. So the Tibetans, and what we're going to do is you take a ruler and put it on the corner, and then go back to your center, and then you make a line on one corner. I should have a pen. Can you see that line? Just hold that there for Lauren for a second. I'm going to get a pen. So you wanna make that now in all four corners. You don't, you don't cover your drawing, you just come up to the edge of the drawing. And you'll see what this is. Okay, this is what it looks like now. 
we just changed universes. It's completely different. It's as if now the square and the straight lines are holding the feminine. You can see that they're holding the mandala. So this creates the dynamism between masculine and feminine, which is so important. <clears throat> it, it's so important. We need to do this on our planet. We need to balance the masculine and feminine. Right now, the whole world's way too masculine and not enough feminine. That's why there's an imbalance. That's why there's rich people and poor people. That's why uh, there's wealthy countries and, and countries that aren't so wealthy. It's because the world, we don't, we're not balanced. And the reason we're not balanced is inside. We, we rely too much on our mind and not enough on our heart. So that's, this is fundamentally important. And what this also creates is when you're first doing this, this looks like a flat sheet of paper, but it's not flat. It's actually four dimensional, okay? So here's the square. And if you look at it, if you can see this and you look at these lines, what they represent is this, if you're going in, so you put the square, if this is the mandala of my heart and you put a square around it, then you draw lines like this, it creates a depth. They call it in, in, in uh, photography, a depth of field. This is farther back, this comes out forward. So just a few lines changes the energy pattern basically. So let's just go now and pick out a color. You can do any color, but probably a little darker color works better. I, since I use blue here around the, my, the aura, I'm gonna use blue here. And so what we wanna do is, we wanna color, and again, remember last week we talked about blending? Put a lot of color next to the line and let it get lighter and lighter as it goes out. And then I'm going to do that on the other side too. So we're now connecting the outer square with the inner circle. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. We're not doing these sides yet. Go the same color on the opposite side. So as you're sitting coloring this, what's going through your mind is, oh, there's a little line there. And Paul said to color it, I'm coloring it. And that's exactly what's going on in your head, in the surface. Underneath that is you're opening up the power and the connection between the masculine and the feminine. This is what's going on underneath that you're not aware of it. The reason they call it the unconscious is because you're not conscious of it. So everything about mandalas is about your inner landscape. And when you, when you watch students paint, they really think they're just sitting there painting, but what they're really doing is revealing what's on their insides. So now I've painted the two sides. You see that? Can you, can you all look at that? Can you see how the circle kind of goes back and the square comes out? That's what these lines represent. It's like you're looking in a box and you're looking at the circle at the far end of the box and we're at the surface. That, that's what this represents. If you don't see it, perfectly fine. Not a problem at all, okay? So now I'm gonna pick out another color for the sides that it's different than this color. So for this, what goes really good with um, blue is I'm just gonna use purple, but you could use green and brown, orange and red, yellow and green. You could use whatever you want. So I'm gonna go to the purple and I'm gonna do just the opposite. Here I put a lot of blue to light. So right here, I'm gonna put a lot of purple and let it fade out. Remember we talked last week about blending darker to lighter. What that creates is a depth of, of feelings. The dark is deeper and the light is lighter. So light comes forward and dark goes back. That's the principle in art. Light comes forward, dark comes, goes back. So we're doing that. And, and one of the reasons 
that not only does it look better and it reveals more of an energy pattern, but it also awakens, yes, awakens the soul because the soul functions and operates through patterns. Like when you have a dream, it's all about patterns. Your dream is a pattern. When my teacher was still alive, I spent four weeks with him from 4.30 in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. We were doing uh, exercises, doing meditations and several other things. But the rest of that time, I did four seven day workshops where all we did is share dreams. We put a basket with everybody's name and then we'd pull them out and we'd spend sometimes one to two hours on each individual's dreams because what we were doing was learning the patterns of what's happening inside people that they're not even aware about it. There was a teacher, he was also one of my mentors named Robert Johnson. He has 17 books. His last book was called Balancing Heaven and Earth. And it was a wonderful book because it, it was an autobiography of 30 trips to India over the age of 50. And I recommend that book from a Western perspective, somebody that's a very strong spiritual teacher, very famous, uh, what he ex experienced in his 30 trips to India over the age of 50. I love that book. And he told me once when I was interviewing him, he said that if people would understand their dreams and the best way to understand dreams is get together in a little group and share each person's dream. And we, we kind of look at it because the, the, what we call the higher consciousness, the higher, po uh, higher powers, or you can put a name on it. Like you can put God, which creates a lot of tension you can put Allah, which, you know, all those kind of names uh, pull us into very, in, in my experience, very rigid thinking. What we want to do is be much more open hearted, open for that. And once when we are doing the dreams, Robert says, if you can really understand your dreams, then you can have a direct correlation between what you call the divine or the higher power on yourself. There's a direct link for each of us but we don't know about it. We've forgotten about it. We don't know how to do it. So to learn these things, this all comes through mandalas. So you can see now I put it in a shape now. And now I'm gonna go on the outside here, the outside square. And I'm, I'm gonna put a slight design there. I'm, we don't have enough time to color it in. You can put any kind of design there you want. So I'll start off with a curvy design. You see that? And I'll do the same on the opposite side. You can try this. I know I make it look so easy. <coughs> and the opposite side will make now, if we had more time, we could measure this all out and I could show you how to use transfers and all that, but we don't have time for that. So we're just gonna, and on this side, we're just gonna use angles. Do you see that? That's just a very basic design. And I know one's a little bit different, but you just want it to come out the same. So if one's a little bigger, it doesn't matter at all. And this is also, you know, when you go into a um, Indian temple, there's all kinds of designs and outside there's flowers and there's all kinds of beautiful things even before you go into the temple, right? And what this is, is the same thing as flowers in, outside a temple. It's because it transforms your feeling awareness as you're heading towards the center. So a little bit design on the outside changes now you see just what what looked like was a painting here that was almost finished we've just done a few things and we've changed the whole consciousness of the painting it's completely different now and we can very easily uh, you can color in this one way or this is a place where you can really get wild if you want to just use different forms of colors uh, since we started very 
pattern form. I'm going to use a pattern and show you very easily how we can color this in. I'm just going to pick a color here that's kind of a reddish color. So maybe I'll just color one side so they can see. I know we're going very fast. If I lose some of you, don't worry about it because everything I say and everything you see is goes inside you into the deep parts of yourself. Whether you understand it or not, it's still going inside you. Okay, can you see that? Very simple. Dark color to light color, dark color to light color. So what this, this is kind of a review of what we did last week. See that dark color there? That goes back into the painting. The darker it gets, the farther back it goes. And the light here comes forward. So this looks like it's deeper and this looks like it's uplifting. The good news is that if you keep the same kind of like dark to light in a whole painting, it has feeling and it all ties together. If you just paint in flat colors, it could still be very beautiful, but it'll just be flat. The painting will be flat and we don't want just flat. Maybe to begin with, we want flat, but as we develop our capacity to share mandalas, we wanna go deep as, you know, as deep as we can go. I mean, as deep as you can go. The, one of my teachers said something I've never forgot. And he said at the time, you're only as deep as you can go inside yourself. It doesn't matter what it is outside. A lot of people has lots of money, big buildings. Well, the question is, what do you know about the inside? So the inside is the true value of your consciousness, not the outside. If, if, you're, if you're outside, if you're just acquiring things, then you're missing what the truth is in life as far as mandala work goes. Mandala work's all about going deep, not staying shallow. It's a spiritual too to bring deepness. Now, as I say this, Rihanna, can you understand what I'm saying? I mean, this is very deep level stuff, even though it's simple for somebody that's 13. I think I can understand. I think the way you explain it is amazing. So I think I'm getting it. And I think as you said earlier, like even if I don't understand, what I'm hearing is still going right. inside me. So. Right, so I'll give, you, I'll, I'll give you this little gift right now. Maybe you'll never forget it in life. You are virtually an unexplored universe inside. Now, when you're going to school, what they do is they develop the mind, which is fine. We all need to develop the mind. But what they don't do is develop the inside. And so in your life, um, and many people use religions, like the beauty, beauty of Hinduism is what it does is expands your religious belief and with through meditation and chanting and through proper use of deities, you can expand what's inside. You know, cause like, like I'm wearing a shirt from India from of Ganesh. Ganesh is a statue for sure, but he's inside. The real Ganesh is inside. The statue is outside, but the real Ganesh is inside. So at your level of consciousness at 13, this is a way where you can begin to explore your inside. Now, over your lifetime through school, you'll make many projects, but I can tell you if you make a beautiful drawing of a mandala and put it on the cover of your project, it will look fantastic. And you can also make one of these and give it to one of your friends as like a birthday gift or, hey, I love you, here's a I love you gift. And uh, it's easy to do, it doesn't take long. You could do one in one evening, but it, you can relate to people a lot deep through giving them artwork or having them connect through artwork that comes straight from your heart. All mandalas come from the heart. If it doesn't come from the heart, it's not a mandala. It has to be from the heart. So we're getting close to time. Here's your basic pattern. It might be nice if some of you out there that are drawing, if you don't finish this tonight and I don't expect you to do, 
please send them to a DT or a Rihanna and uh, in the future pictures. And I'll be happy to take time to respond and give you, you know, my feelings of what you've done. And like we said earlier, we can't really talk about um, health issues and stuff. But in the future, if you want to ask about health issues through the painting, the painting is revealing you. And whether we know it or not, it's the truth about who and what you are at this the time. It looks like a little drawing, but it's the same thing when somebody looks at a fingerprint. That little fingerprint is your essence, and nobody has it except you. It's the same with the mandala. This is your essence, and it's the truth that's coming out. The question is, in our 2021 era that we're living in, can we understand this truth? Can we make something of it? What does it mean? Where are we going? It would be so nice if they take some children or teenagers and have them explore the inside instead of the outside. I would like to see, uh, like Rihanna, if you went to a class for one year in, in the mountains or in the jungle or in the uh, total in nature where you grow things and you, you just work with outside, you don't work with the mind at all. You get away from the mind. We have plenty of mind, but with, with, we're not exploring the inside enough. So all of you that have done this, what the other side of the mandala, what's behind the mandala is part of you trying to communicate with you through this simple drawing. I know it looks like a little coloring exercise that makes us calm and leads to better health. 100% that's a fact, but underneath that is also a communication of what's the creative spirit inside you is speaking through this painting. And when you see a Sri Yantra, when you walk into a room with a Sri Yantra, it affects you. It affects you. You can feel it. And you can feel the energy in these little paintings. I'm going to finish coloring this one and I'm going to frame it and put it up somewhere with a nice frame and a piece of uh, glass or plexiglass over it. Because I can look at this in five years from now and think of Aditi and Rihanna and the others that we've gone through because it, it holds the energy of the time we've spent together. So mandala coloring is simple and it's very, very healthy, but it also is uh, revealing something about your, your inner landscape, your inner world. And they've said the, just as the universe is inf infinite, we are also infinite. Okay, we have so, a little bit of time for some questions. And thank you. Thank you all for, if you've been here the whole time with us, I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate Aditi and your lovely family. And I uh, hope your husband heals quickly. Uh, I know what it's like, but it's much better in a few weeks than right afterwards. But modern uh, medicine is just unbelievable. Yeah. It's miraculous. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for supporting the vision again it's it's been a wonderful journey yeah. and i know uh, this is not the end we've just gotten started exactly yes that's what i tell all my every student that comes to a class at the end of the class this is not the end this is just the beginning of your journey and i've had people that have painted with me now for 20 25 years and uh i mean they they just live different lives they're different if, if if i could have your son and daughter for a year and they would yeah. just hang on my right side and my left side and follow me through the world and through life and through these peoples. At the end of the year, they'd be totally different human beings. And it would be the same for everybody. Yeah. I was lucky enough to have had a very creative household. My father was doing art. My mother was an art teacher. They were also meditators, healthy food. There was never, oh my, my mother would go into a tirade if there was potato chips or soda. I mean, she, they, my parents were strict healthy people and it really translated over to my brothers and I because you know like I said by the time we were 23 we all had gurus we were all on a spiritual path we were all meditating and we and we have been for all of our entire adult lives yeah any questions otherwise I'll just keep talking <laughs> uh, I'm good at talking I have a closing okay um, just some closing remarks um I think also, Paul, thank you so much for sharing that piece of advice. I think you are my first 
in a sense like my guru and mentor and you got me started on this journey. Um, and I really hope to continue this throughout my life. And I think this is why we have teachers like you to help us expand and channel our universe. So thank you. The word is inspiration because inspiration means in spirit. But I'm just a screen to your own interior. The real teacher is what you have in front of you. That little sketch that you're drawing, that holds a key to the wisdom inside you. And you're very young. And you know, us people that are a little older than you know by know how fast life goes by and how much time we spent working in our families. And and I've raised three families. I know the family realm. It's a lot of life and it's totally rewarding. I wouldn't change a minute of it. But the fact is that the, the real guru is what's living inside you. The question is, how do you contact it? How do you relate to it? This is one way, and it's, a, it's an ancient way of using creativity and the mandala especially to contact what's inside of us, our creative universe. And at the same time, it moves us from our left brain to our right brain. And they call it the right brain because I always tell my students is it's the right brain. That's the brain that does the creativity. And that's what we need. Like in the meditation, we need the two halves of the brain to be balanced. We need the two sides of the heart to be balanced and we need our life to be balanced. You know, it's the most important thing. And in my life, I try to do it every single day. I get up, I do meditation. I go straight to a, a bath uh, and I, in the tub, I do yoga in the tub, come out and do yoga. And then I put some heat on my body or a, a cold pack. And then by 10, 10 30, I'm ready to go for the day. And it's a spiritual practice of balance that I don't know how people live without a basic morning practice. If I had to get up and drink coffee and drive off to work, I don't think I'd live. I, that to me, I can't live that way. I cannot do it. I have to spend time making sure I'm in the most balanced place I can. And then I'm ready. I mean, you saw that big Sri Yantra. I've got a big Sri Yantra here. And if I wake up at two, three in the morning, I can come down here and the, I don't even have to turn the lights on. The Yantra has got the whole room buzzing. You know, there's like a, you know, it's like a hurricane of love and joy down here. You know, it comes off the paintings. And when, and when you look at the price of some paintings, Oh my God, people spend millions and millions and millions of dollars for paintings because they hold something that's sacred. And you probably haven't heard of him, but you can look him up. He, he was the founder of Pondicherry, which is in Southern India, where one of my, fa my fathers had two books published in India. And one of them was in, at Pondicherry. His, his name is Sri Aurobindo. And I grew up with his whole library. He was this amazing spiritual teacher in Southern India in the late 1800s. Uh, and he said, he made a comment. He says, one small painting, one small painting, because it reveals what nature hides is more valuable than all the gems of all the Maharajas put together. One small painting, because it reveals what nature hides is more valuable than all the gems of all the mirages put together. Now you have to, that's a very deep statement for you to comprehend, but think of that. One little painting is worth more than all the money in the world because it, the money cannot reveal what's inside yourself. You can't, it can't. You have to be able to find some practice and painting and mandala work is, is a practice, it's a sacred practice to expand who and what you are and in my life the most important thing i have in my life number one is learning the capacity to learn change and grow i'll be doing that until i was with a very good artist in new york one day and we, we are looking through this artist none of us had ever heard of and on the last page he drew two eyes and then the word under there thank you and then died and I've always remembered that this was about 30 years ago, I saw this. And so learning is the most valuable thing we have as human beings and sharing, you know, what we know. Owning is a big problem in our world. You know what I mean? 
and whether you're in India or United States or California, there's it's still it's it's if it's about me, it's about the brain. If it's about we, it's about the heart. Okay, any other questions about the painting? We're we're off into uh, a lot of psychology around the mandala right now. Thank you still you. with us, Rihanna? It's past your bedtime. <laughs> no. Uh thank you no i was i was just observing what you said thank you um this is i'm definitely going to keep that in mind um and i always look back at your sessions to just take in what you said again right. um and to everyone else thank you again for being a part of this journey we really hope that this workshop has helped you in some way and i am confident that all of paul's teachings and monica's and vikas's medicate meditations will help you to heal center and open your heart for more bringing in more love colors and balance in your life right. so paul monica and vikas thank you thank you thank you thank you again right um and i'd also like to thank my brother ayush who has been my partner in crime He's and in the one. background <laughs> But that's important is because the female is in the foreground and the male is in the background. That's yeah. very <laughs> apropos. <right? laughs> yeah. um, hi, this is Anju. And I just wanted to express my gratitude. Uh, the entire uh, six weeks has been has really helped me heal. And uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, in fact, it, um, Aditi knows about it. I wrote to her and it has been um, quite helpful to me. I want to invite you all to India whenever it is possible. Do come and visit us sometimes. Thank you so much, Paul. And you keep on mentioning Sri Yantra and uh, the more this yearning for learning how to make the Sri Yantra. So when are we going to class. get this opportunity? Yeah. Hopefully so. So Aditi, that's a Sri Yantra class. Yes. <laughs> Take a lot more. No, you could do it in six weeks. The Sri Yantra is one of the most beautiful symbols ever uh, manifested, and it comes basically from the heart of India. Yeah, you know, it's all over the world now, but it, its essence is in ancient India. And Anju, where do you live? I am in New Delhi. In New Delhi, that's a small city. <laughs> I've been there. Just getting from one airport. The international airport to the domestic airport that could be a real circus oh, sometimes oh yes oh yes <laughs> but it's quite an amazing city i've d done a tour of delhi it's it's um, you know when you're in india when you come from a california like i do and when you're in india it's it's like the world that you know dies and there's a whole new world and how india functions and it's functioned for you know maybe five thousand years uh it's just a wonder and uh when I'm in India, I just feel so alive and I just feel like I belong there. You know, there's just something about that, the Indian and the, the place of where enlightenment happens more than anywhere, anywhere else on earth. It's quite an amazing and I look forward to coming back there. My, yeah, I've please, been there we'll three come. times. Yeah, we could take you up to the mountains as well where you can sit down and have a 360 view of uh, the Himalayas and uh, teach us how to make mandalas. Okay, Aditi, let's write this down. Let's do a mandala yeah. tour to India. <laughs> let's do it, Paul, let's and do it. Stop by and see family on the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Anuja, you wanted to say something? Yeah, first of all, thank you very much, Paul and Ariana, Ayush and your mom, dad for involving all of us in such a wonderful learning. And it's really been a very good journey. And uh, I really thank you, Paul, because, uh, you know, we ha I have mandalas at home, which I bought in Dharamshala, but I didn't know it was a mandala. When you told me about it, I've been looking at it, you know, more carefully now. And uh, it really is in the center of my, you know, uh, it's in my drawing room and it really is a nice piece. That's and uh, so I just want to say that I want to learn more. So whenever you are teaching, please keep us engaged. And right. and well, I think this, this class that Aditi was mentioning is probably going to happen. It's going to be a four- And I just tried to complete this. Oh! I, 
why you were talking to look me. at how beautiful that is oh my god you have to frame this now so but all these portions will stay white you can leave those white or color them in with a very light color up okay. to you so i just wanted to show it to you that look that is so beautiful were... her painting was just touches my heart Okay. okay. All right. Nice it's time, time to say good night then. Yes. Om Namah Shivaya. Thank you, everybody. Thank Namaskar. You. Namaskar. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Paul. Aditi, you can call us anytime. I will. Trust Don't me. Don't call me. Call Lorna. <laughs> <laughs> she always I knows know. where I'm hiding out. Yes. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you very Thank you much. So much. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Good night. Namaste. Thank you. Just close.